everyone, and welcome to the celebration of Women's Entrepreneurship Day. I'm Chicago's ambassador for this wonderful organization, and it's so exciting to be here with my co-host of Kitchen Chat, Chef Jamie Larita. Thank you, Margaret. And we are here in the beautiful Middleby Residential Showroom in the Merchandise Mart, Suite 137, and I'm so glad you're joining us today. Usually, Chef Jamie, we have these celebrations <laughs> in the showroom, and today we're virtually celebrating some amazing women in Chicago. But first, a little bit about Women's Entrepreneurship Day organization. It was founded by Wendy Diamond, who is such a great businesswoman, and she has helped empower through this organization 144 countries, their ambassadors, helping 250 50 million children and girls, inspiring them with all of the wonderful programs and um, things going on. Wow, so grateful to be here with you and our team in Chicago. Woohoo, the Windy City. Especially our incomparable, amazing, tireless ambassador, Margaret McSweeney. And thank you so much to Viking for supporting us and our movement. Margaret is driving and representing Women's Entrepreneurship Day's mission in your amazing city. And it is so important for us today to celebrate. I'm Wendy Diamond and I am thrilled to be here today to celebrate with you Women's Entrepreneurship Day organizations we do. In 2013, I knew if we could create a simplified movement to uplift the 4 billion women on the planet to create better futures for themselves and ultimately achieve gender equality. We can do it. Seven years later, I am proud to say the We Do movement is stronger than ever. We have an army of over 300 global ambassadors who are volunteers and leading and celebrating our movement in 144 countries. We are empowering women and girls to become active participants in the economy by igniting a network of women leaders, innovators, and entrepreneurs to initiate startups, drive economic expansion, and advance communities around the world. Sounds like an amazing, amazing organization. It is. And today we are honoring some wonderful women here in Chicago. And the theme for the celebration is creativity and chaos, redefining the art of business. And there's been a lot of chaos, but I'm so inspired by what these women have been able to accomplish. Yeah, really. you know, and it's a great time for uh, creation, actually. I think these times, Margaret, breeds Creativity. I mean, it's like when we're down, we tend to go up. And these women surely are great examples of moving and growing upward. Yes. First up, I cannot wait for everyone to meet Donna Mondi. And you introduced us. I love Donna Mondi. She is a fantastic Chicago uh, female women's designer and just so good at what she does, Margaret. She really, really well deserving of this award. Please meet Donna Mondi. Well, Donna, congratulations on being an honoree for Women's Entrepreneurship Day organization. You do so much for the community and have built such a successful business. Could you first share with us about your interior design business? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you. And thank the team over at Middleby and um, Jamie and his whole crew over there. But Margaret, it's so great to meet you this way. And I'm honored and I'm honored to be in this great company of these fabulous women, so thank you. Um, I run a design firm in Chicago, uh, soon to be in Chicago and Colorado, so as soon as tomorrow. Um, but I've run a, I've had a design firm here for about 20 years. It's called Donna Mundy Interior Design, and we are very focused on residential, the residential market. So we do everything from high-rise, um, you know, urban condos to estate homes in the suburbs to we. Uh, We've always worked across the country, but COVID has um, brought us even even more outside of Chicago, which has been a um, an interesting silver lining. So yes, and speaking of COVID, uh, today's theme is creativity and chaos, redefining the art of business. Has COVID impacted you? Um, if you could share with us about that. I mean, absolutely. I don't think anybody could could sneak past this and um, come out unscathed. So it's been a challenge. Um, you know, I, I'm grateful that we work in an industry that wasn't completely halted. We had to adapt and change. 
but we were never really like completely shut down. So that was good. Um, it's changed. Gosh, I mean, I think every, we're all going to be forever changed from this and it'll be interesting to study this five, 10 years from now and, and the psychology of it and, and how it, it forever impacted, you know, society. Mm -hmm. But I think for us um, as a firm, it really um, allowed me to just depend on my team. And, you know, I've never really loved the work from home model. I like us all being together. I like the collaboration that happens in design. And I think we're all better designers and stronger because we're together. Um, and so that was a challenge in the beginning and for the, you know, but, but we, my team really stepped up and everybody was super responsible and we worked all the way through, you know, even during the, the, you know, first initial quarantine period, we were all working and we were all connecting um, quite frequently. And, and we have, we have these great systems in place that allowed us to adapt so quickly. Um, all of our, we work as a team on all of our projects with me being the principal designer. And then I have a lead that, that is in charge of running each sets of leads that are in charge of running each of their projects. And um, what we use to communicate with each other on a daily basis, whether we're across the office or across the country or across the city is the same. And so, and where our presentations are all done digitally our drawings are all done digitally. So it's, um, it wasn't super hard for us to change. It was more of, you know, missing each other and missing that, you know, being together. And then we have a beautiful office in West Town that um, I would go into and, you know, pull all the fabrics because we have a great library there. So, so I still could use it because it's my own. We own the building and I didn't have to cross paths with anybody. So it was kind of nice. I had a little bit sense of normalcy through that. But, but I do think it's changing how we work with clients. Um, I think the expectation of you got to be here, you got to be here, you got to be here is over. And so it's allowing us to be a little bit more efficient in when we are there for a site visit, limited, you know, limited people, limited involvement, always protected. Um, and we try to really make the most of that time instead of, you know, more frequent period, you know, visits, we try to space those out a little bit. And we've always known how to zoom and go to meeting and do all of these things, but now everybody knows how to do it. So <laughs> we can easily present that way. We just ship our samples ahead of time with everything's, you know, separated and marked up and packaged for them. So it's, they just follow along and it, it's fun. It's kind of a fun, bright spot in their day. Um, you know, when we're presenting a, our, our designs to them. So, and then construction site visits, we just uh, monitor how many people are on site and be really careful. So but we're, you know, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. And it's, um, it's not ideal. It's not going to be our best year, but it's going to be an interesting year um, that I think, you know, I've been through. I started my company on 9-11 wow. and yeah, I didn't, wasn't, didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> so that was just a twist of um, bad luck there. But, and then I've been through the, the earlier recession of 2008-9 and coming out of that. And so I think just you have to be resilient and adapt and you just don't know what's going to come. And, and, um, and so we just, you know, kind of keep your eye on the prize and keep looking forward and, and just day at a time, get through it. And, if, and, and one day it'll be over and we'll look back on this as a period of, of growth in a different way, maybe. I love that resiliency, flexibility, all key components for the successful business. So what advice would you provide for the women entrepreneurs out there? Let's look at the beginning ones and those who are already established in the career. What would be your biggest advice and best tips for succeeding? Um, this is one of my favorite questions and also the hardest one to like, I could spend hours saying, <laughs> here's what I think, you know, um, for, for people that are new, for women that are new, newly entrepreneurs, I think, um, Understanding, I think filling in your gaps was always a thing that I, I tried to do early on because I was formally trained in interior design, opened an interior design business. So you go, yeah, I got it, right? And then you're like, well, what do you mean? Like, what, what are these taxes for? And like, what do I have, you know, all of the business functions, uh, you know, to really do it well. I knew basic accounting, I knew basic business skills, but like how to really grow something um, how to manage through each level of design, you know, of your, or of your firm or of your office, like when you hire your first employee, when you fire your first employee, you know, and then when you build this team, 
it's I'm constantly learning. And so I think filling in the gaps of what you may not be the best at, like your natural skill is going to take care of itself and your passion will, will keep that growing. But the stuff that's not what you really signed up for is where you, you need to put a little bit of time more in the beginning um, than ever, just to make sure that you do fill in those gaps of, of knowledge and make sure that you know you can't just count on everybody else to know your business. You really need to understand all the, all the inner workings of it from HR and PR and marketing and SEO and website and branding. And, you know, there's just so many hats that you wear and um, they're not all going to come naturally. So I think it's, I read a lot. I still do. I read a lot of business books. I'm always reading, you know, the, you, what you don't want to do is chase every, you know, star. You can't, you know, always get distracted by the shiny thing. So you know, I've picked one system that's worked really well for my company and I've used it for about eight to 10 years, I think. And, and I still take little bits and snippets from other things, but I don't just kind of ditch that and start over and do a whole new system with a different, you know, book or author or thought process philosophy. So I think that's, that's for the new people. Um, for the ones that are more um, advanced, I, you know, again, my company's 20 years old, so mm. I feel... Um, I think soon. No, we just did. No, we just did 19. Sorry. This next year will be our 20 year. Great. Um, I think for them, it's more about maintaining focus and in a, you'll create for creatives focus is kind of the opposite side of, of the brain because creativity is all, you know, it's very like, I don't know, intangible and and fleeting and, and, you know, it's, it's something that it's really hard to like to corral and right. focus is like that day after day after day of doing, you know, yes, it's different. Yes. It looks different. And I think that's what keeps me going, but the focus when it's, you know, it's great when everything's, Oh, we landed a new client. Oh, we, you know, sold a big project. Oh, we just did a really cool install. Those are the days where it's easy to stay focused. It's the other days that are really hard <laughs> to just be like, okay, you know, clients mad about a bill or something, you know, whatever, whatever that may be that comes your way or a great employee just quit. You know, there's, those are the mm -hmm. days where it's really hard to maintain that focus. And I think it's just kind of being kind to yourself, maybe allowing yourself a little bit of a pity party and then moving on and adapting. And, um, you know, I think my husband has taught me a lot about, about this and he's just super brilliant and very charismatic and wonderful. My Mr. Right, which I call Aww. him on social media. You don't see his face very often. He hates taking pictures, but I refer to Mr. Right. Um, he, um, taught me, you know, he has this great perspective of looking at challenges as an opportunity. Um, and so he kind of, he loves that sort of opportunity to be a hero. And you can come in and you can like rescue this and save the day. And, you know, and, and it's kind of a cool way to, if, if you could shift your mind into that, I haven't mastered that, but I think of him when I face things and it's like, okay, Donna, like, you know, just get in there, get in that ring and keep fighting. And this has been a year to, where you got to get in the ring, you're taking your hits and you just keep fighting. And oh. so I think it's just, and then surrounding yourself by other um, entrepreneurs because, and this, this may go back to the, um, the newer entrepreneurs, um, I, it's lonely. You know, mm. it's lonely when you're the boss. Everybody thinks you want to be the boss. I think they think that, yeah. you know, it looks so good. You get all this freedom and you make more money and you do this and, you know, and it's just like, uh, you know, you also are obsessed with this. You know, this is what we're dreaming about all the time. And it is lonely. Like you're not, you know, always one of the crowd and you, mm. you know, they're not going to tell you everything. They're a little afraid to say something or, you know, you're just making decisions. You're trying to make decisions that are best for your team, best for your company, best for you personally. And they're not always the same answer. And so I think having a, a support team of really strong women helps keep, you know, help just helps give you a sounding board and camaraderie and, you know, empathy, like somebody can understand what you're feeling, or maybe they faced it and they have some advice. So I think having a great network of other women, women and men, um, but for this purpose, women, uh, I think has really, has really helped me to maintain that focus and to stay positive and, and try to keep being a hero. 
I love this. Thank you for being a hero and an inspiration. Mm. And dear friends, you can find Donna at Donna, Donna Mondi, dot com, and just see the beautiful designs and work that she continues to do. Congratulations for being an honoree for all you've done with Women's Entrepreneurship Day organization. We are just honored to honor you and wish you oh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been so great chatting with you, Margaret. I really appreciate this and I'm going to be smiling for the rest of the day. What a fun celebration honoring these great women entrepreneurs of Chicago. Thank you for helping. Are you celebrate. kidding? It's my pleasure. I mean, all of these women are just in Chicago. They're just these pillars of inspiration and success. Every single one of them is not only a friend, mm -hmm. but an inspiration to anyone watching this. I mean, I can't even think of better candidates. I know, such, such an honor to honor you, dear women entrepreneurs. And I wanna encourage those who are listening and out there, don't be afraid to pursue your dreams. You can find the inspiration through other women and also men. Yes. You know, it's just not limited hey, look, to women. Hey, look, you know, <laughs> we're good for something. <laughs> and it's, it's always great to network. You've heard a lot of the tips from these women about networking and then helping others along the way. So please celebrate Women's Entrepreneurship Day. Check out the wonderful website as well for great resources. And also, always remember to take a moment and savor the day.